we're looking at how to change lanes on dual carriageways today. Now, um, we're going to try and do it as safe as we, as we can. Quite important, check them mirrors, what's, what, what's behind you, especially if you know you're going to change lanes. And um, I just want to talk about something what I'm going to be doing while I'm driving is when I'm going to change lanes, I'll check what's, what's behind me in my centre mirror. And I'm going to change from left to right. I'm going to check the right mirror. Now, I'm also going to check my shoulder in. Now, I'm not going to do what, what's, what's called like a blind spot check, which is looking right over you as though you're pulling off from side row. Because I'm travelling at speed, I'm looking what's at the side of me there. So I'm just going to look across. You know, and if, if the pillar's in your way, you can always lean forward and look across. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It takes a bit of practice, but it's better to be safe because if you're travelling at, say, 70 miles an hour on, on, the, on the left lane, whether it be a dual carriageway or a motorway, and you want to change lanes to the, to the next one on the right or, or further along, obviously you've got to plan it and you need to be looking. Now, that, that right mirror checks what's behind you and a little bit next to you, but it doesn't check exactly what's next to you there. And there could be a cat, especially on a busy part of the, um, of the day, that could be just, just right next to you that you don't see. So it's quite important, obviously, to do things early and plan it and not to actually suddenly just change lanes. So check your mirrors, check a little shoulder check, and if you're happy with it, let them know what you want to do before you before you cross lanes, and the same sort of thing when you're going from the 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 right or middle across to the left side, checking your centre mirror, checking your left mirror, and just checking across to the left to see what's next to you in the blind spot that you can't see in the mirror. Okay, let's get some driving done, and I'll demonstrate it. And so we're on the dual carriageway at the moment, and it's national speed limit, which is 70 miles an hour. And the, the, most of the time, when you're driving along, you won't need to overtake or change lanes but uh, to change lanes it's either two things is to overtake the car in front of you because it's going a bit slow and you want to go past them safely and uh, to turn right that's another reason so at the moment i'm doing fifth gear 62 miles an hour not catching up with the van in front of me I look behind me there's not a lot going on but i'm going to do a right turn at the roundabout i'm going to do a u-turn so to change lanes, I need to plan it, and I can see what's happening around me, and um, I'm doing things nice and early. So there comes the roundabout, it's asking me to slow down, so I'm checking my mirrors. A little check, check to the right, there's nothing there, I'm sure signal, there's still nothing there. And then coming across nice and early. And it's important that when you do change lanes, you don't suddenly turn the wheel, steering wheel quite sharply, because it'll cause the, the car to kind of swerve at the back, and possibly go into a spin if you do it so quickly. You don't need to turn the wheel hard, it's just a gentle little bit of a turn. So ahead of us, going quite slow, so we're going to check, check in, signalling, and coming out nice and early then. They're going slow, and the thing is, when you come off a roundabout, you'll find that the big heavy goods vehicles can't pick up speed as fast as you. Now you can see the white van behind me also, checking my left side, and I'm checking and letting them know. Coming back in, white van's following me. I can see on the, on the right lane there's a white car overtaking the van. Now, he might want to overtake everyone, but he's struggling to overtake the van there, and that's the thing is, if you're going to overtake someone, make sure you've got the power to do it, and you've got the space to do it. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself running out of time. So we're going to do a right turn at the roundabout. See, so they're coming back in. That's what to expect. That's quite important when you pull back in to give yourself space from the car you're taking. So I'm going to change lanes to the right. So I'm checking. There's nothing there. And the thing is, I'm planning these things nice and early. And I'm bringing that speed down to the right turn. Checking to the right, nice and clear. I'm entering. I'm going to do a U-turn again. Follow it round. I'm just repeating this a few times because going from left lane to right lane and right lane to left lane can be a bit tricky when you're not used to it. So I'm checking across, make sure there's nothing in the blind spot then. And I'm across to the left lane. If there was something next to me on the left, I'll take the right lane to get off. building my speed up. I can see ahead of me there's a heavy goods vehicle. I can see behind me there's nothing. There's already a cow who took me. It must have come flying off that roundabout to do that. So I wasn't going slow. 
And the thing is, if, if this is a long stretch of road, I know I'm going to have to plan to have that large vehicle ahead of me because I'm catching up with it. So that's something I need to do. I'm going to carry on on this road. I'm going to follow the road. And there's, there's lots of little roundabouts. And the thing is, every probably 100 metres, maybe, I'm guessing maybe 300 metres, there's going to be a roundabout. So I can, when I come off the roundabout, I have probably opportunity to overtake. You've got to watch out for cars behind you overtaking you. So I'm not going to overtake because I'm approaching a roundabout. And that's where you got to remember, I can see the sign saying reduce speed. There's no point overtaking because first thing is that heavy goods vehicle might change lanes and go right and I might be in his way because I'm going to go ahead and if I do overtake him I don't want to be overtaking him on a roundabout because a large vehicle the back trail could cut across your lane dangerous you can get a, a squashing situation so I'm just going to keep me gap there's two heavy goods vehicles there and just see how he's in two lanes don't overtake him just stick where you are it's a large vehicle he can't help it I'm just going to follow the road ahead, there's nothing in the right, so I'm going to come across to the left, check the mirrors, signals come off. Now we're going to go ahead again, and, and I'm just going to do a left signal, so I'm checking. And just, I'll say, the temptations, use the middle lane and go ahead, so I come off in the right lane. But you're causing problems for yourself, just stay where you are on the left. Because with experience, you might try that, but as a new driver or a learner driver, it's just more hassle than it's worth because you're gonna cause problems, especially if the car on the left suddenly starts swerving. We're just gonna follow the road ahead and just sit behind the, the, the large vehicle for time being. I might get an opportunity, so if at the roundabout I I pull off just behind him, then it's probably going to be an opportunity to overtake him when I come off the roundabout because remember, heavy goods vehicles can't go too fast. When they pull off, there's, there's quite a lot of weight behind them. I'm down and I'm going. And I'm off the cover. And on the roundabout again, I'm going to follow the road ahead. And sometimes it's going to be like this where you just got to sit behind them. Because, like I say, I keep, keep saying, temptation, use the right lane, overtake them. And that's fine if you've got a lot of experience. But you've got to remember that um, people do things wrong next to you on roundabouts. They'll swerve. So quite important on a busy roundabout, get up to the white line, you'll see what's going on then. Here comes my gap. And come across to the left white van's on my right shoulder, I can see him in the right mirror just about. And do you see the problem? If you get stuck in the right lane and you're not very fast, you're going to have to put your foot down to overtake. And I'm not going particularly fast because building must be up normally. We're struggling to get past me here. And that's the problem. If you get stuck in that right lane, you're going to struggle, you're going to get pressurised by cars behind you, you've got bigger engines. Just going to sit behind this vehicle. There's opportunities, and, this, and, and when you're traveling a long distance and it's like this, sometimes you just got to chill out and not worry about the fact that you sat behind a, a vehicle like this. Just keep your distance from it. You can see what's going on then. Because if you get close to it, they can't see you either. So I want to change lanes to the roundabout. I want to go right. Now, I can't pull out, there's a car going past me. I'm going to pull out now. But as I pulled out, that white car pulled out. And I'm going to go right at the roundabout. So I'm checking the mirrors, and I'm signaling. So it's having a bit of power to be able to do it at the same time. You know, you can't just check your time in, in busy traffic. You've got to plan it. And remember, there's a big truck next to me. So when I pull off, I want to make sure he's either ahead of me or behind me. I don't want to be right next to him because his trailer's going to cut across. You see, it's cutting across a little bit into your lane there. And a more tight roundabout would be more of a problem for you. Go all the way around, and his mirror signals come off. That's it. Now, at the next roundabout, I'm going to do a right turn, so it's another lane change. 
and you can see there's, there's a van on the, the right lane, but he's not gaining ground that fast, and that's the thing is, check the mirrors regular. So he's gaining ground very slowly, so I'm going to tell him I'm going to pull out. And I'm slowing down a little bit at the same time, because obviously the van pulled out at the same time. Very good vehicle. And I'm slowing down for that second gear or third gear for the roundabout to turn right, third exit I'm going to take. Keep me gap from his truck here because he's pulling right across me here. And I'm coming across. Now, at the roundabout, we're going to be doing a right turn. We're going to get on a dual carriageway. It's going to be a long carriageway, so there's going to be opportunity to possibly change lanes if the cars are going slow. So, I'm going to check what's happening next to me. We'll check. Definitely clear, and I'm coming across. And I'm taking the fourth exit. I'm going to go A5 North, it says on the ground, on the sign as well. And the lights control the traffic, quite important. Don't be shooting depth through these roundabouts like this. You see ahead of us, it's red. There's your first exit, and remember on these big ones, count the exits if it helps. And we're still changing lanes on carriageways. We're just having to deal with roundabouts at the same time. There's your second exit, so because it's one of them ones where it's four, fourth one, I want to start to plan to, ch to change lanes. So I can see the left lane says left, so I'm not going to come across because I want to get off. I can see there's a car on the left shooting past, racing towards that red light. Seems a bit pointless to be honest, wasting all that petrol. And I can see on my right there that the, the white dashed line is going to come into the middle. It's, it's helping me to get in, get across. Now I can stay in that middle or I can get across to the left lane. It depends how busy the traffic is. If it's busy, I'll stay in the middle. If it's not busy, I'll come across to the left to get off. And that's what you've got to say. When you want to get off on these, these ones there, sometimes you've got two lanes to get off. So there's your third exit. I want the one after. There's the middle. Lights are on red, I'm going to check what's happening, I'm going to come across to the left lane. And I'm coming across here. Now, the thing is, that car next to me on the right might be going the same way. So don't be surprised when I come off here, he's, he's going to put his foot down or something. Depends how much of a rush they're in. Because there's dual lane there. Anyway, so we're getting back onto a, a, a carriageway, a dual carriageway, a a slip road this time. It's quite a big one, so I'm checking my mirrors. Show a signal. I can see there's nothing on the right, but I'm checking anyway. And I can see ahead of me there's a heavy goods vehicle. Now, you can only go 60 miles an hour on this road. It's a 70 mile an hour road. I can overtake it because I'm going to do 70. So I'm going to plan it. Nice and early. Remember, gentle with the steering. Once I'm out, check and cancel. I'm not going to pull back into that gap, it's too small. That large vehicle was on the, over the white line then for a second. So when I overtake him, I'm going to put my foot down a little bit to get past him. I don't want to be going past him slowly. There's nothing beyond him that's a problem. So I'm checking, putting my foot down to shoot past him. Now when I pull back in, check what's happening. Give a lot of space, show a signal. It's easy, plan it nice and early. Remember, you need to have the power to have a second set vehicle or something. Fifth gear doing 70 miles an hour then. So, so we'll do that again. So I'm looking ahead of me. There's another vehicle in the distance. I can see cash above it. There's two cars and a heavy goods vehicle. So I'm doing 71 miles an hour at the moment. So I'm dropping that back down to 70. I'm catching up with them still. So I need to plan things, so I'm checking what's happening, now behind me, now next to me, show a signal, and start pulling out nice and early. And we're talking about 10, maybe 20 car lengths there, pulling out, because I'm catching up pretty quick. And the thing is, it's easy, I'm just cruising at 70 here. When I go past it, I'm looking ahead of me, and there's nothing behind me pressurising me, so I'm not going to pull straight back in, because there's no pressure to pull back in straight away, and then vehicles I'm catching up with. 
if I pull back in, I'm going to pull them back out in 30 seconds or a minute. So I'm going past them. Two cars there. Did you see that um, Fiat 500 then just get off then? That was bad planning. It could have, it could have pulled in quite early and actually um, pulled in between them two cars and got off easier. But it all took them two cars and really took it late to change lanes and get off. So if you want to get off, plan it early. Go try and overtake one or two cars extra. Like it is a good example. Half a mile away, that sign is telling me to get off. I'm not going to try and overtake, even though, it's, even though I'm catching up with the cars, because I know in half a mile I'm going to get off. There's quite a few cars there, so I'm easing off the gas, keeping that two second gap. So my speed's going down to 60 now, because the temptation is overtake them. What like that? P500 did then, but I'm going to run out of space, so I'm checking my mirrors, sensor left, signaling, and keeping the gap. Because if you look ahead of it, there's not a lot of space. Which is what happened to the P500, it ran out of space. And when I'm coming off, I'm checking my mirrors, cancelling. Easy. So remember, if you're going to get off a carriageway, make sure you give yourself space. You know, plan it. Just like I say, plan and change lines. So yeah, it was a bit strange then seeing that then because that Fiat 500, and I know I keep going about it, but that could have been avoided quite easy and it could have been dangerous because if that car was a, a second or two later, it would have been going across on white lines or it'd be causing a problem for the car. Cause when it came in, it wasn't a lot of space if you look behind it. So it was a dangerous move by that Fiat 500 then. It could have easily um, pulled in before them two cars and just sat behind them for a few seconds. So I'm in the wrong lane, so I'm changing lanes, which is fine. I just checked, get a blind spot, and there's a white van there, and I'm getting on, to, on the dual carriageway again. So I'm checking my mirrors, signaling, acceleration lane, building my speed up, open. See, there's that heavy goods vehicle there. I might be able to catch up with it again. There's another large, large vehicle on the right. Now I'm checking everyone, telling them what I'm going to do. Nothing there. I'm pulling out. Now I'm gonna catch up this car quite quickly, so I'm gonna check. Nothing there, and I'm pulling out. So I'm hanging around and I'm doing 70 miles an hour straight away. Now I'm not gonna pull in again because if I pulled in into this space here, I'm gonna be pulling out in the next minute. And I'm doing 71 miles an hour, catch up a bit pretty quickly. But I will pull in after that heavy goods vehicle.